right, everybody. Good morning and welcome to another Wow Wednesday. I'm so happy that you decided to be with us this morning. I promise we're going to make it a great use of your time. And this morning we are turning the tables. I am Trish Carr. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the co-founders of Women's Prosperity Network. And this show is normally done by the fabulous Nancy Matthews. But today we're turning the tables on Nancy Matthews. And she is the guest today. And boy, you are going to be so happy you are here because what we're talking about today is open mouth insert foot disease. I know many people suffer from that. You open your mouth and before you know it, you said something that wasn't a great idea to say. Oh no, what do I do now? We've all done it and we all wish we haven't. So I'm so glad to hear, uh, to see so many of you today because we are going to be speaking with Nancy Matthews and many of you, of course, know the fabulous Nancy Matthews. She's been doing Wow Wednesday for... 11 years? 12. 12 years, every single Wednesday, never missing a one. And she is, talk about consistency and perseverance. She is the one. And that's what I love to call her, the one. And let me tell you a little bit about Nancy, because she's here with you every week. And I know that you know she's a leadership sales and a marketing expert whose life and work is grounded in one central theme, and that is the most important things in life aren't things. Life and business are about people. And that's exactly what Nancy's about. Her best selling book, The One Philosophy A Better Life for You and Humanity, gives us a blueprint for valuing ourselves and others by treating every person you meet as the one. She's the founder of the People Skills Academy, which Nancy is the missing link for so many of us human beings, is the people skills required to have the best relationships in every relationship. And she's a mom. She's my sister. She's my friend. She is a global leader, a music lover herself, and a rock star. So I am so excited, Nancy Matthews, to welcome you to Wow Wednesday. Good morning. Thank, good morning. And thank you so much for um, hosting me today. I love that we're turning the tables and having a conversation that's near and dear to my heart, which is all about having better relationships. And I, and I want to invite you all to think just for a moment and reflect over the past week, or maybe even the past month, any time that you felt irritated, pissed off, angry, disappointed, hurt, was there another human being involved in that? <laughs> Give me a yes. <laughs> there were either in the comments on, on Facebook or in the chat here. Like our lives are all about how we, the quality of our lives is all about how we show up and interact with other people. And today, being able to have a conversation and give you some tips and tools to enhance those relationships so that you can move towards a drama-free life, like that brings me so much joy because it makes the world a happier, better place. Yeah, absolutely. And I said earlier, it's the missing link. And I truly believe that. Um, it's, you know, when you're in that moment and you've had a short fuse and you say something you shouldn't have said, how do you fix that? Or um, you know, the drama that's created sometimes because we've said the wrong thing or we said it the wrong way. So let's get into it, Nancy Matthews. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, let's start with that. What, do, you know, short views. So it's always a good idea to think before you speak. <laughs> yeah. And so, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And we are emotional beings. And my first lesson in this came from my son when he was about six years old. I picked him up from school. We're driving home in the car, go, getting ready to go have dinner. 
And as we're heading towards home, he's like, mom, can we get McNuggets? I really want McDonald's. And I was like, no, we can't have McNuggets. I've got dinner planned and it's not, you know, not healthy. We've got a good dinner plan. So like, I can't believe you're such a mean mom and you won't let me have my nuggets. And he's all sitting in the car, all pissy. And so I just let it be for a moment. And then in 30 seconds, he was like, oh, so at school today, Johnny Smith said, blah, blah, blah. And we had this great time. And I was like, I thought you were all mad at me. He's like, oh, that was just my, my emotions showing up. I'm good now. Oh my gosh. How old was he? He was about six. Wow. So, so here's the thing is when you have, you know, your button gets pushed and you react, know that that initial response or typically what happens is we say something, someone else responds emotionally, then we respond emotionally back. And then there's this battle going on, like the knock and block and rock your, you know, knock your top off type of thing. <laughs> yes. And if you can pause either for yourself when you do have that emotional reaction to something being said or being heard or upset, if you can just pause long enough to recognize, oh, that was my emotional response. What's really going on here? Or when somebody reacts towards you, don't do that volley back and forth. This little pause will make a huge difference. And one of the lessons that I learned was from a woman named Morna Nalamaku Simeona, who was the uh, woman, Hawaiian woman, who brought the ancient practice of forgiveness of Ho'oponopono to us in its current form. And what she reminded me and reminds us is that the thing that upsets us, that causes us to get triggered or say the wrong thing that we regret or to react to someone, um, the thing that happens in the moment is not really what's upsetting us. We are the sum total of our past and our memories. So when someone says, something that triggers you. In the moment, you're actually recalling a memory of something similar in the past that happened, and it's those old emotions that you're bringing into the moment. So when we can remember that that initial response is really just a memory from the past being triggered, then we have an opportunity to just pause and get present and say, what's really going on for me right now in this moment? Pausing sounds like a great idea in a lot of situations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And remembering, for me, <laughs> I pause and I'll probably go, oh, I'm not getting my way again. <laughs> That's what's going on for me, you know? And I'm so, uh, my, my husband, Dan, I always call him a slow responder. <laughs> which is probably a good thing exactly but I'm always like let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go I always want an immediate response I get the same thing from Susan Susan likes to mull things over and I'm like let's go let's move come on come on come on you know one of those type a personalities and it's so funny because I'll say to Dan Dan you're being a slow responder answer the question he goes I'm thinking and I'm like, it's such a foreign concept to me. Aren't you supposed to just blurt out whatever's on your mind, Nancy? <laughs> that That's where the foot and mouth comes in, right? Oh. It really happens. Oh, well, I guess I do that a little bit. Mm -hmm. I guess I do, well, but I, I like that pause. And let me let me go ahead and, and give a, another you know tidbit and uh, suggestion here because... I know that you are that way. So I, I recognize that in your behavior and your reactions. So what I do is instead of what I've learned to do, I didn't always do this. What I've learned to do is to not get hooked into whatever reaction you're having. And I know that you're, that's your process, your process of thinking through, like Dan gets quiet, Susan gets quiet and they process, but your process is to say words and respond and through that that action that's how you end up coming to the other side kind of you're kind of like my son's app 
Oh yeah. Well, and it, I guess it goes back to what Olivia just wrote in the chat is learning the communication styles of other people. Mm -hmm. And that's really helpful if you know them, but so many times you you're in a conversation with someone you don't know all that well. So the pause is a great response. I, I need to remind myself to be more of a, uh, a slow responder, for sure, for <laughs> sure. And then the other thing is, um, uh, and I'm gonna talk about Dan again, Dan um, stuffs, puffs, and blows. First, he'll stuff his feelings. Mm. Okay, so um, silly thing. So I went ahead and I watched Ted Lasso without him for a couple of episodes. I was sick. I was laying in bed. So I love that show. And I was in the middle of the season and I was like, let me watch that. He's down. He doesn't care. I'll watch it. Well, he cared. He was like, how did you go ahead for me? And what were you, you know, that wasn't right. And he got a little ticked off. And uh, the next day I said something to him about it. Like, I'm sorry. And all that stuff all that stuff you're supposed to say, right? Oh, which and is he, where we're he, gonna go next, actually. <laughs> well, good, well, let's go there because then he says, oh, it's fine, I don't really care. So that's his stuff. He stuffs it. He says, okay, whatever. And then eventually he starts to puff a little bit. He holds in all these things. And then slowly I can start to see him doing that more and more and more until Months later, all of those things he's been stuffing, he blows. Like he blows, you know, you've seen it, right? He gets out of nowhere, he'll get angry over something, but it's really the stuffing and the stuff he's been puffing. And then eventually he blows about it. So um, I'm tired of that. <laughs> and I'd love a way for him, you know, to learn how can I express myself without blowing up? How can he express himself without blowing up? Because um, it's really an uncomfortable situation when somebody's in that space of, I got something to, to say, I've waited so long, I've been stuffing my feelings, and now I'm gonna express myself and I have to hold my anger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So yeah. how do you deal with that? So a couple of things, and thank you for giving us such a great, you know, example of this, the things that really happen in our lives. So let's roll back for a moment and go to when you watch the show without him and you apologized and said, I'm sorry, really taking a hundred percent responsibility for the depth of how that show could have showed up for him and, and really embracing in that conversation. The challenge can be that we don't like to talk about things that make us feel bad. So we stuff and we like, no, it's really okay. But when it really does bother us, we need to create that outlet for it. So one of the pieces is when we do something not good, so it was not good that you watch the show without him. You didn't realize in the moment that you were doing it, but obviously it had a blowback effect. And I don't know if this is the case, but I know for me, sometimes when I do something wrong um, or not good, <laughs> that hurts another person. The first thing I do is I go in my mind for all the justifications of why I did it. And it wasn't a big deal. How did you know that's what I did? Because you're human, <laughs> just like me. So what we're doing in that moment is minimizing our responsibility for taking that action. So I go back to the principles of the one philosophy, which is really your blueprint for living. And if there's anyone here who doesn't yet have the book, please go get it. You'll see how it changes your life and the lives of all of those around you. And when you do something not good, you hurt someone's feelings, you, you know, insert foot in mouth, when you do those things, when you have a client that you were supposed to deliver something for that you didn't, like all of those situations are times when we don't really want to take responsibility because it doesn't feel good to acknowledge that I did something that hurt someone else. And that's really what it boils down to because you care so much about him, you don't want to be doing things that hurt him. 
So we look for justifications. Well, it really wasn't a big deal. He didn't tell me it would matter to him or that client didn't show, you know, he didn't show up on time for me three times. So what if I didn't show up for them? This is just what we do as human beings. So to step up your people skills and enhance your relationships, when you do something that that hurts another person or um, is not a good thing and you didn't mean to do it, you're not intentionally going out, we're just human and we make mistakes, right? The very first thing to do is see how can I take ultimate 100% responsibility for this situation? It doesn't matter what the other person did. It's all about me and how I can take responsibility and own up to it. When you do that, it shifts everything in the dynamic and the conversation that ensues. And you come to the table with, I am so sorry. You know what? I was being a little selfish. And you don't go on to say, I was feeling sick because I wanted to do this. That's justification. I'm right. being selfish is really the bottom line. I'm so sorry that, that I cut you out or it hurt your feelings. I really didn't mean to do that. And will you forgive me? You got to mm. add that. You got to add in. Will you forgive me? Because without asking for forgiveness, that's where the stuffing comes into play. Mm. You know, it's so clear when you talk about it like that. And I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. Where I went was, we can watch it together again. I'd love to see the repeats. That's they were repeat. so good. I'll watch it again. Right. What's the problem? Why is that an issue? But it's to him, it was our thing, something we did together and enjoyed together. And I violated that. And I didn't get that till this moment. And it happened two weeks ago. So thank you for that. Well. Yeah, you know, it's one thing to say that, though, Nancy, it's another thing to step up and do it. Well, that's where practice comes into play. And for, you know, all of you know me as the co-founder of Women's Prosperity Network, and, and I do coaching and speaking and all this stuff, and wrote the book, The One Philosophy. And what occurred for me was a couple of years ago, I just started to observe what is the thing that most people come to me for? Yeah, I'm brilliant on funnels and pricing and models and marketing. I am so good at all of that stuff. And the thing that people most seek counsel from me for is in their conversations, their communication, uh, in their relationships. If you've got a, a, somebody, a, you hired a virtual assistant and they're not performing the way they're supposed to. How do you handle that situation? You've got somebody, you know, a you know, thing happening in your relationship with your spouse or, or a friend. How do you handle that situation? And that's where the People Skills Academy was born from. I recognize that this is a needed area. Like just what we're talking about here, this is something that happens in your relationship. Two weeks ago, you and I talked about it briefly but really didn't get into the depth of that conversation. And all around the world, all around the world, people are going through their lives, holding on to this stuff, having fractured relationships in their businesses, in their families, in their communities. And when you look at the global impact of it, it's division, it's hate, it's infighting inside of, of companies and cultures and, and our world. And we need to stop this. And the place that it gets better is right here. And that's why I created the People Skills Academy so we could come together and let's unpack what's really going on. Like imagine if equipped with this tool of, of having the conversation in the moment or even the next day, you know what? I'm really so sorry, honey. I didn't realize, you know, I never meant to hurt you. And I promise I'm doing, I'm going to do better. I am doing better. Will you forgive me for that mistake? What are they going to say? No, <laughs> right? When you ask that question, it, I mean, I could feel the relief. I mean, it just comes off. 
when you when you go as far as say will you please forgive me yeah it makes such a difference and they are going to say yes i mean it's rare that someone's going to say no it's got to be pretty pretty bad to and, say no and you're remember that you're creating a new pattern in your relationships and your communications so maybe they'll say yes the first time but not really mean it well then what's your part right because they don't know that they could trust you won't do it again because remember that reaction in the moment is actually emotions trapped to memories from the past mm. not the first time it's happened and mm -hmm. and i'm not pointing you out or you know this is just no a of course story. not yeah yeah and you know what i love that you said that because you know i too when you just said that people come to you and it's really their relationships and what say what you're saying to each other and unpacking things that's what i think is the most uh, prevalent thing i too get from people that i work with and here's the thing i think i have really good skills in this area i can talk to anybody and give them the what to say and how to handle it differently next time and um you know give them everything they need and they go oh trish you're so brilliant yet when it comes to my own life right let me tell you, I had, that's why we need to come together and have discussions around it because we can't see it when we're in the frame. Right. And, and so, for example, the other night, Sunday night, I did something that hurt my daughter's feelings. Hmm. And I'm sitting here thinking and saying, I apologized, but did I ask for forgiveness? I'm not sure that I did. So I need to clean that up. Yeah. So here's the deal anybody here do yoga mm -hmm. if you've done yoga put it in the chat how long have you been doing yoga for so let me check because i've been doing yoga i'm going on two years now yeah <laughs> so the thing about yoga 30 years gene has been doing yoga beautiful. wow beautiful so here's the thing about yoga whether you've been doing it for a month or 30 years they still call it the practice of yoga the practice of your people skills is ongoing it's ongoing which is why with the people skills academy we've got great content that's part of the academy curriculum and we come together twice a month for the purpose of having these kinds of conversations um a few months ago i did a teaching on how to get more yeses from the people in your life and it's clients, family, relationships, just get more yeses in the world. Get yes from the Comcast cable guy when you call him to change your plan, right? <laughs> so when I was teaching that lesson, one of the things that I, I taught that night was about how to give people that you're asking something of the power of choice. And again, mm. this is a lesson I learned through my kids. Would you like to take a bath at in five minutes or in 10 minutes? And when they're two years old, they tell me five minutes because they don't know the difference between five and 10. <laughs> when they get a little older, they're like 10 minutes or say, how about 15, right? <laughs> but here's the key. When you are asking someone for something and you want to always give them a choice between two things, don't give too many because a confused mind just stops. So give people a choice. Do you wanna wash the dishes before dinner? I mean, see, before we watch TV or after? We as human beings need to feel a sense of control. So when you give me a choice, it makes me feel in control. So you're responding to one of our most basic human needs as opposed to go clean the dishes, go take a bath a little bit of preparation on your side to set you up for success so that you get what you want without an argument. Yeah. When I was teaching the class, one of the um, members mentioned, like I saw her just sitting there, like the light bulb went off and she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize what I was doing and how I was saying things to my husband. You just helped save my marriage. 
our people skills are essential for the quality of our lives. So go back to the question I asked you in the beginning. Anytime you were irritated, pissed off, upset, there was another human involved. What if you had better skills to be in those situations? What would your life be like? And that's why I created people skills. Yeah, it's, and you know, even last week we had a, a conversation at people skills a and symposium. just, yes, a symposium. Yes. And I mean, we talk about, they seem like such little things, but they're huge. One of the things we spent a, a good deal of time unpacking is how do I say no to someone when I love them? I care about them. I might even enjoy whatever it is they're asking me to do, but I know it's just more than I can handle right now. And just the little nuances of how to say no, how to be able to say no and keep the relationship whole, because that's everything, isn't it? Yeah, I got some great tips on that too um, that I want to share. So first of all, um, I held two open symposiums, uh, one in December, one in January, and our faculty were there. We had great conversations. And for everyone here today, I'm making the replays of those available. So all you need to do is go to thepeopleskillsacademy.com. So Trish, would you mind putting that in the chat for me? Thepeopleskillsacademy.com. Yes. Very much. Uh, and you can get access to the replays for the symposium. And if you want to join us, we've got our class tonight, which is all about preparing in your life as opposed to having to repair. So uh, you have an opportunity to, to join and become part of the, the, the academy. Uh, get the replays for now. That's absolutely perfect. And um, one of the Biggest lessons I've learned came from Stephen Covey, who I'm sure most of you are familiar with, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He also created a book that I loved called Principle Centered Leadership, and that's where I got this from. And I'm giving you these tips. We'll open up for some questions in a few minutes. I'm giving you these tips for you to consider, is there a problem with, you know, or a relationship that's, that's damaged at this moment. Like maybe you're on totally opposite sides of a point. It could be a political thing. It could be having to do with, you know, cleaning the house. It could be with a vendor or a strategic partner that you had a fallout with. Like just, there's lots of ways relationships can break down. And Stephen Covey shares that the reason we most of all have disagreements and problems and fractured relationships, he says this, the root cause of almost all people problems is that people do not listen with empathy. We're not listening with empathy. Instead, we listen from our autobiography. Mm, wow, that's good. Right? This is a quote that says, we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. Right. So I invite you to take a new level of awareness to, are you listening with empathy, which is you seek to understand, you really want to know what's happening for that other person and where they're coming from, instead of just trying to prove your point, right? Right. It will make such a huge difference. So here are some guidelines, and, and I want to invite you to be courageous and step in to revisit, you know, if there's some fractured relationship that you have, let's, let's get it back to wholeness and love, because I would imagine you want to feel love. You don't want to feel hurt and disappointment. You want to feel better, but something happened that you know, your emotions got involved, it was triggering memories from the past, and there's a buildup. And so I invite you to step into having the courage to open a conversation. And when you do take on this, and this is directly from Stephen Covey, your attitude, when you go into that conversation, number one, I assume good faith, do not question their sincerity or their sanity. Now think for a moment. 
when you had an argument or a disagreement with someone. And we've certainly seen lots of that when it relates to the vaccines or masks or politics or like there's big stuff going on where a lot of emotions are coming up. Did you think, oh, they're crazy for thinking like that? Okay. We'll so, see. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. I was walking around somewhere. I was at a park and we were outside. I was wearing a mask and I, I'm walking around or I go into the supermarket and I noticed myself being all judgy about anyone I saw not wearing a mask. And that's the key. I didn't stay in the judgment. I noticed I was judging and I paused back and I was like, you know what? I can't, I'm not questioning their sincerity or their sanity. They have a reason they're making that decision. It's not my place to judge what that is. Anyway, so approach these conversations with courage. Number one, I assume good faith. I do not question their sincerity or their sanity. Number two, and this is probably the most important attitude and essence that you wanna to bring to the conversation is I care about our relationship and I want to resolve this difference. Like, isn't that the truth? You care about the relationships you've had challenges in. I want to resolve this difference. Please help me see it from your side. Please help me see it from your side. When you have somebody who's standing so strongly in their opinion, and it's so different from your own, rather than trying to convince them and bring them to your side, Ask them, please help me see this from your side. A few years ago, I screwed up. <laughs> me? What? <laughs> and a friend of mine, her father died. And when he passed away, I was traveling a lot at that time. When he passed away, I was, um, I was away on a two or three week trip. I didn't make it to the services, but I called her when he passed and sent my condolences, probably called her a day or two later. And then it was a couple of weeks that went by before I called her. And when I called her, she was so hurt and upset and blasted into me. I can't believe you waited three weeks to call me. Don't you know my father? It was like, she laid into me. Now, in that moment, I felt terrible. But in that moment, my mind also went to the justifications. She didn't know what I was going through during that same time frame, that I had somebody close to me who actually committed suicide in that time frame, and it was really challenging for me to process. When she lit into me, I never told her that this happened. I said, I am so sorry. You are absolutely right. I've not been a good friend to you. What can I do to fix this? How can we get back to love? Wow. Like, wow. To this day, she doesn't know. Yeah, right. Because it didn't matter. Exactly. And when you give justifications and excuses, it says she's not taking responsibility for what happened. Yeah. And, and, and it, it didn't, that wasn't that just one phone call. So this goes back to when you ask for forgiveness, it's going to take a little bit of time, especially if somebody's really hurt. It took about three weeks. <laughs> and then um, we all went to dinner together. And um, I was like, is it okay? Can we be together? She's like, yeah, there's other people going to be around. It's going to be okay. And I remember saying at dinner, because um, it was still a little tenuous in the relationship we weren't back on solid ground and she's like so you know we were talking and I said yeah next week I'm going to this personal development seminar she's like oh, haven't you gone to enough of those yet and I looked at her and I was like obviously not <laughs> <laughs> so it's great we need to practice this stuff we really do so uh, I really encourage you all to get the uh, symposium replays there are nuggets in there for you and join us and come have these conversations on a regular basis and see how it enhances your life in every way yes absolutely you know I, the time is just flying by I know we got to open up for questions. Yes, and I already have a, a, a question from Dr. Roz Warfield. 
So why don't we go ahead and open up and invite Dr. Roz into the conversation. Let me do, oh, Dr. Roz, your line is open. And if you would like, um, awesome, Michelle, so glad you just got the book. You can get it on Amazon, The One Philosophy, uh, or you can go to theonephilosophy.com and get an autographed copy if you would like. And before you go into that, Angela said that quote was so powerful from Covey. Would you give it to me one more time? Yes. The root cause of almost all people problems is that people do not listen with empathy. They listen from their autobiography. Mm. Wow, that's good. That's really good. All right, Dr. Roz, your line is open. Welcome. I know you've been making great comments in the chat. Thanks for doing that. And I know there's lots on your mind. So so go ahead. You're open. I can, I can, I can do it in my best 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Number one, this is a loaded um, conversation. It doesn't matter whether it's personal or business. What are we doing with our people skills to be able to communicate? And from you saying, um, um, Dr. Cubbies, my thing is, can I actually hold space in the shoes of the person that says they've been offended? Can I hold space in the shoes of the person who, uh, uh, who's been offended? And um, I, I, I think, and I know I've shared um, um, on occasion, a sibling, um, maybe a situation with a, a partner, husband, because y'all know I, I, it's, it's not the point of putting your business out there, but because we know that WPN is a safe place of integrity and character, um, I, I'm just trying to hold back the tears for this. So Nancy, may you have an abundance to all of the other programs for just coming back to be centered in the practice of communication because perspective is paramount to any of us, but we have to understand how to respect it. And Trish, I'm so proud of you because when you said you went back and you thought about that, y'all, when we listen and engage, truly listen, put your phone down. Don't be able to pounce like a lion with a rebuttal. Be yeah. still and know that we hear God's whispers and his voice. Y'all, it is so important. We, if we read in the Bible, that's how wars are started. We got wars now in the 21st century with the pandemic. We've just got to take time to respect, honor, and be in character and excellence of our communication. And there's this song by, I can't think of it. Um, Darlene, if you're on, type it. His name is Brian. I can't say it's like Brian Wilson, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the song is, it's worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. When I have to swallow my pride, even if I don't think I'm wrong, but the thing is, is the relationship worth fighting for. So exactly. I'm going to yield the mic on that, but no, I always have a voice. Um, there's, this is loaded. Y'all might have, y'all might have to do this at least once a month. Just, just, <laughs> this is, this hey, is baby. loaded. Uh -huh. you said that, that one is... young lady said, this saved my marriage, yeah. but we have to look at ourselves. It is about us to understand integrity and honor and excellence. Yeah, I love y'all. Absolutely, y Love you that's too. Nice. And, and you know, that's exactly, Roz, what you said. We have to do this once a month. That's exactly why Nancy said, I am starting the People Skills Academy. It is clear to me that this is needed often. And Nancy, you're doing People Skills twice a month, right? Yes, we do yeah. um, the first and the third Wednesday of every month. And we have, it's a 75 minute session with a, you know, focused content and then group discussion as well as breakout sessions. Um, we need to practice this and where else is this happening? We talk about life, we talk about business. And here's the thing, if you've got crap going on in your home, your business ain't gonna do good. If you've got crap going on in your business, 
your home ain't going to be so good. <laughs> so, so that's what this is about. It's the constant practice of these skills. And, you know, quite frankly, did I need to create another business? Probably not. Well, you needed to. Because, had to. Yeah. Let me, to. let me get, let me get this in. I had to. Do, so I'm showing up for you twice a month, first and third Wednesdays of every month, plus, um, you know, curated some content. Wait until you meet our faculty that's assembled for this. Of course, Trish is one of our faculty members. We've got some extraordinary uh, instructors in there. So um, get the symposium replays. You can get those for free. If you want to join us and get in this practice, you can go ahead and join in the academy and just go to the peopleskillsacademy.com. Yes, and I just I did put that in the chat again. The people, it's the peopleskillsacademy.com. For everybody who's on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for everybody who's on the phone. Um, but easy enough, the people skills, because that's what we're talking about. The people skills academy.com. Let's go to Peg Duchesne. Hi, Peg. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity. This conversation is so enlightening. Thank you both for your transparency, your authenticity. You um, really play full out. And I'm so excited about the People Skills Academy. I went to the symposium. The, I think it was the very first one yeah. and somehow missed the next one, but we'll get the replay and I'm going to mark my calendar for sure. So many of you know that I'm I'm a communications consultant and I work with the bank methodology and it's similar to DISC and Myers-Briggs but a little different because it's how people like to get their information to make a decision and how they communicate and like to receive that information and it's a 90 second quiz I put it in the chat I'd love to um let you see how you show up and then understand how other people show up in your world. But I am so enthralled. You are so right about how we need to practice this. It's a skill that needs to be fine tuned mm -hmm. and things can derail us like Trisha's example of when she was down for the count with Rona and um, binge watched and realized how that um, you know, was a little bit of upset for her husband. And then I the did it just the other day with my daughter. Uh -huh. I was selfish. I was thinking about me and I forgot about her feelings and what she wanted. I did it. <laughs> right. And the Stephen Covey quote about listen with empathy. So often we are just listening and waiting to respond and reply and justify our existence instead of like Roz said, realizing that putting ourselves in the shoes of the other person yeah. and totally understanding and you know words matter communication matters and this is just another way that you both are pouring into the women's prosperity network and giving us what we need at the exact time that we need it so thank you thank you thank you yeah you're welcome and thank you for um stepping up thank you for being committed to helping people learn not only their communication styles, but others like all of this is so, so important. It's absolutely key. So I thank you for um, not only being an expert yourself, but recognizing the need to practice yourself. Like that's beautiful. Love you, my friend. Love you right back. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah, I urge you to get in touch with Peg because the bank method is an, is a quick and easy way to trying to get your head around. How does this person communicate? Yeah. So very helpful. Wonderful. I want to, before we open up for the next caller, I want to drop this in as an opportunity to raise your level of self-awareness because with this nuance that I'm going to share with you, if you call this into your life, everything will begin to shift for the better. And that is, if you notice in your reaction or response to something, either that you're justifying your behavior or your words, or you're judging the situation or the other person, know that is an indication that you're not really taking 100% responsibility, that there's something that you're, you know, covering up or wanting to get through. Basically, where I look at it is anytime I am in judgment or justification, 
I am not coming from a place of pure, unconditional love. And that's where I want to operate from. I want to operate from love. So if I'm just justifying or judging, those are not feelings of love. And, and let me also say that sometimes you're not there in that moment. You're not, you're in the justification. Oh yeah. Okay, great. Be in it, but keep your mouth shut. Wait until you're ready to be coming from love before you, I'm speaking to me here because mm -hmm. I want it. I want to get this conflict handled right now, right now. Let's talk about it right exactly. now. Don't you, don't you walk away from me. Don't you leave the room, right? I want to get it done when in fact I need to shut up and process and not do that. Stop the pounce. <laughs> Dr. Roz just said that. Stop the pounce. When I, when I messed up the other night, I was just quiet, let my daughter share what she was experiencing and going through. And I heard in my head, well, bip, 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 bip. Like, I heard it going on in my head, but I didn't say it. If yeah. I had said it, it would have denigrated the relationship further. Um, and it was, still was not comfortable. It didn't feel good. I tell it did not feel good for me. It did not feel good for her. Like it's not a good thing, but it didn't fester for days. Yeah, right. That's the thing. And, you know, these are habits that we've had for our entire lives. Most of these habits, this habit I have of let's handle this right now. Don't leave the room. Right. And that's one of the reasons, Nancy, I just love what you're doing with people skills, because we've got to create new habits that doesn't happen from listening to one wow Wednesday the practice, right? It's the practice. It's the practice. Let me go ahead and um, open up for Olivia Jones. Very Olivia. good. Good morning, Olivia. How good are morning, you? Good morning. Good morning. I just have to share again. We talked a little bit about this um, last week when we did the symposium. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that I, I enjoy people overall. And I, I have the gift of gab. I love to talk. Mm -hmm. And last week I had a situation where I really had to get a sense of self-awareness. And one of the things that was helpful for me was being able to do that step back and pause mm -hmm. because it's easy to get to a place where you want to uh, react as opposed to respond. And I do that a lot when I am the, the emotional triggers. It happens for that, all of us. Yeah. That makes you want to um, respond react to especially in a in a business sense if I'm trying to make a sale mm -hmm. and people automatically assume or they're like well you know you're being I don't I don't want I don't want it so that you know they're automatically retracting or pushing you away right and you feel rejected or right that's yes the that and so the, the 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 initial response is like well, just listen to what I have to say. And I may not be trying to sell you something, but being able to have that discernment and, you know, not become uh, reactive is and, challenging. Well, and, and that's, where, that's where the new practice comes in of doing things. Like if you think about the very first time you drove a car, it was awkward, right? right? Yeah. And, and that's why practice is so important. I'm reminded now of the stages of learning something new. And most people teach that there are three stages of learning, awkward, mechanical, and then natural. Mm -hmm. So I actually say there are four stages of learning. The first stage is actually resistance. Yeah. Once you get over the resistance or recognize it and say, I want to do better than this, then you're going to be awkward. Then it'll become mechanical and then you'll fall into natural. So again, I honor you for recognizing that you were being reactive. What you're learning to do is, is to be response-able. Responsible, 100% responsibility is being mm -hmm. able to respond. And that's where that self-awareness piece comes into Nancy. Yeah. And then I also think and another thing of the self-awareness piece too is having a clear understanding of what empathy is. Mm -hmm. I think we get, a, there's a, 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 not many people really have an understanding of what it means to empathize as opposed to being sympathetic, but to truly 
empathize with someone and 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 that is you know all that comes into to me comes into play and in how i'm communicating and making sure that i clearly get my message across and then the person gets their message you know so that i hear yeah. with, the, with the ability to understand as opposed to just listen mm -hmm. i love that you said you brought up this piece about what is empathy really and and i think empathy is about allowing someone else to have their feelings not saying oh you shouldn't feel that or i want you to feel like just allow someone to have their feelings beautiful olivia you are to quote our friend dr Roz, loved appreciated celebrated cherished and most valued thank you so much for so you are you are you ladies are too i love you ladies yeah love thank you you're, right back. you're welcome thanks olivia well, wow, what a great conversation. I have two more people I'd love to get to. And um, Evis Ramirez, um, you've had your hand up for a while. Go ahead and open up. I'd love to hear what you want to say. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm driving, but um, I'm so grateful to listen to this uh, program today. Thank you so much. It's really relevant in a daily basis, definitely. I just wanted to ask, um, I'm curious about mm -hmm. your suggestion when you have a conversation and you know that the other person has been intentionally mean and provocative in a negative way. I did exactly get mad, but I hold and I didn't answer, but I I, I get mad. So let me so, get let me get clear okay. on what you're saying. So you were in a, the other person, you believe it, it was being intentional to provoke, to provoke you and get you upset? That's right. So number one, there's probably some history in this relationship. It's not the first time it's been like that. Is that, would that be correct? Not exactly. Uh-huh. So it wasn't the first time? Wasn't the first time. Yeah, but so this so time, this time was different because it's not exactly a person that I have a relationship and is uh, the person that barely know me. Mm -hmm. You know what I would, so uh, I would probably give the benefit of the doubt because you're listening a little bit from your Odell biography, like I talked about, which is your history, your past. Have, are there other people in your life that have spoken to you in that way? Do you have memories of other people speaking to you in that way? Not recently. But ever? Uh, well, I guess, but I don't remember. <laughs> Not at the moment. Yeah, I would, exactly. I would, I, I would go back to... Um, not assuming that their intention was to be harmful. And I would ask a question and I would say, you know, it's interesting when we were talking the other day, I, I felt like you were intentionally trying to provoke me. Was I mistaken? And if I would ask the question and that's a I little actually, bit of being vulnerable. I actually asked the question, uh, and what, what they, she was saying what she was saying that and she lied and I know that for a fact and really wasn't so here's where Did I come through nice <laughs> yeah so here's where I would go next and I, I don't know if we'll have time to go fully into this piece where I would go next if I was having an experience like that with someone who was lying to me or deceiving me I would take a hundred percent responsibility because I, my belief is that everything that happens in my experience, I'm responsible for in some way, shape, or manner. So what I would do is, and I'm also a, a woman of faith and I connect to God. And here's the thing. If I am feeling hurt, lied to, betrayed, it means I am not in direct connection with love, divine source, and God. So when things like that happen, and they happen to me too, where I go is reciting the prayer of Ho'oponopono. 
And I pray for God to clean and clear whatever is in me that's attracting this experience. Mm. So I invite you to take a look at from this experience, how can you be better, different? What can you learn from this? You had this experience for some reason. And I look for what is the reason I had this experience so that I can more come from love. It could be, and I would make up a story that this person doesn't know how to be truthful because they can't trust anyone in their lives. They don't know how to be honest and open and transparent. They're always out for a dog eat dog life. Wow. Isn't it amazing that that's how she needs to show up for herself? It's really not direct against me. Dear God, please clean and clear whatever's in me attracting this experience. Much, much like Evie's when my friend got so upset with me because I didn't call her for a few weeks, I could have, you know, just been hurt, mad, and that would have, you know, damaged our relationship where I went in that moment. She needed somebody to be mad at. Her father just died. Mm. She needed somebody to be mad at, and I could be that space for her. Wow, what a great point that was. Was that helpful? Definitely. (laughs) Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. And take a look at the prayer of Ho'oponopono. And actually, I I just did pray. (laughs) Okay, good, good. And and I want to leave, we're going to open up for Pastor Darlene in a moment. And I wanted to leave you with... Uh, a poem from Bruce Lee and take this on my friends and into your day because stuff's going to show up every day all day long you are given the opportunity to practice your people skills every day driving down the road driving in a car going to the store you have the opportunity to practice your people skills and Bruce Lee says be like water making its way through the cracks. Do not be assertive, but adjust to the object and you shall find a way around or through it. If nothing within you stays rigid toward outward things will disclose themselves. So be like water, my friends, flow with the water. Water always finds a way and it doesn't resist. It goes through nice and easy. Be like water in your life. Mm, beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you, Evis. Pastor Darlene, go ahead and open up. You get the last word today. Oh, thank you so much. This has been so good. Um, you know, I think about Stephen Covey when he says, when he says, you know, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Right. That if we spend time more time listening. <laughs> and and less time wanting to get a word in edgewise i i think that i know that we would be better and i'm so grateful for this conversation because i had to i learned it the hard way (laughs) you know i feel like we all did kind of learn it the hard way where you said things and you can't unsay them and even if people say i forgive you there's always that thing that kind of tries to rise up at another date and time so i'm just maybe uh, that maybe that it'll 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 attempt to and it depends on what the person does if they make it their business that i don't want to receive that anymore exactly it won't come up again and i'm thankful for this um this time of, of of teaching and i i got my uh symposium information too because I always want to be better. And I just wanted to make a a comment to um, Peg Duchesne. Uh, (laughs) You know, she's talking about the bank code. Uh, I am an NKAB, just so you know, Peg. (laughs) I did the the crack the code and um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So thank you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. What a great conversation, Nancy Matthews. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much more at the peopleskillsacademy.com. Make sure you go there. There's lots of golden nuggets in that symposium recording. Even if you can't listen to the whole thing at one time, 
just put it on in the background while you're working for 15 minutes and you're going to get so many great things, so many right things to say, so many things to do that are like so simple, yet because of our habits, we're just not doing them, really. So Nancy, thank you for working with people to create a better world. Thank you for the one philosophy, which is about you and humanity coming together. I mean, truly, the one thing about the, the one philosophy is it truly is to heal the planet. And I really appreciate you taking that on because we need it so much. And you know how it starts? One person at a time. So be the one to step up and up your people skills because it truly is the missing link in life and in business. And Nancy, thank you for bringing us all together and thank you for having the peopleskillsacademy.com so that we can continue to learn. You are most welcome. It's my pleasure and my purpose. And uh, thank you for, for the opportunity to be here today. And uh, all of you out there, you are loved. Get out there until we see each other again. Be the one. You have a great day, everybody. And make it a wow Wednesday. We'll see you back here next week with another episode of Wow Wednesday. Enjoy your day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.